Hey there, Bill. How's it going? It is going incredible, Kevin. Welcome out this morning. Welcome, everybody, to the Investor Guys podcast. Kevin Mills, Bill Barnett here. We're here to talk about real estate, get you going, keep you going, tell you what we're doing, what's happening around the country. So uh, today, what, what's on the agenda for today? We talk about farming neighborhoods all the time. I think people have a general idea of, of what it means. It's, it's choosing an area to focus on, but I don't think they really understand how to go about farming an area. And I have a couple of videos that I put together for, for my own, own videos on my YouTube channel. Um, but some of the things that aren't gonna be talked about in the videos that we're talking about, other things that you can do is, maybe we should talk about this towards the end of the show, uh, you can do mail campaigns, you can even do door knock campaigns. The same thing as real estate agents do. Um, I like to drive around an area and get familiar with it and pull out properties that I like that, that specifically appeal to me for whatever reasons. And I put together some videos on that. So let me go ahead and uh, play the first one for you. Uh, and I told you about these a few weeks ago. This house is vacant. Grass overgrown. It is it's clear that nobody's been in and out of that driveway for a long time. There's a guest house back there. I see that it is just sitting empty as well. There are no curtains on the windows. I don't know if you can see that in the video because it's the right day. No curtains in the windows. We can see into the house. So pump up your audio a little bit, brother. What's that? Let's up your audio a little bit. See, this okay. is a house we can't pick up and apply the strategy I was just speaking of. I think it's just part of the, the video. So okay. that is a property that I actually saw again a few weeks ago. And while I was out, I went ahead and looked at uh hold on a second, let me pull up the next one. Looked at the uh information on, I guess I can't minimize it. I uh, looked at the information on that property to see if I could find the owners and to see what the comps were and everything else. And that was the next video that I had queued up ready to go. If I can go ahead and uh, make that work for me here. I did a little bit of homework and I found the name of the owners of this property and what the current value is of the property, it's an estimate. And this is the house that I was just showing you. Right. Back in 2016. So now what I have to do is follow up and uh, see if they want to sell it or if I can talk them into selling it. As I said, as you can see, actually, it uh, looks pretty vacant. Um, so we'll see what happens. But again, not difficult. I literally did that during the break. It's my radar and detector going out there. On my radar not because it's been vacant. In fact, the last time I saw this property was about five months ago. And five months ago, it was occupied. It had people in it. I have been watching this property because I am an avid, classic car collector. I also collect- uh, Very cool. Uh, muscle cars. And 1926 garage. Exotic cars. I have had to have a commercial space for years in order to keep the cars there and work on them. This to me seems like it would be so cool because I could fix this up, make it look like an old gas station, which is what it is. It was built in 1921 as a gas station. Uh, make it look like an old gas station, actually be able to work on my cars here right around the corner from where I live, right across the river from where I live, and have a place that's fun to hang out for me and my gearhead friends and just have a really cool property that I need anyway due to my hobby, but uh, I could own it and fix it up and make it look the way I want to make it look. Uh, this property, as I said, has been on my radar for a while. In the back of my head, I never imagined I'd find it vacant. In the back of my head, I always figured I'd come by and make these people an offer and pick up the property, but now, I have probably an even better chance, I'm hoping, because it is vacant now. So 
This is one of those situations where you call for. Uh, this was built in 1921, as I said, as a gas station. It is still uh, a commercial property. It's still zoned commercial. When I looked it up, it is commercial. It's going to be more difficult to find a value on it. Uh, so what I'll do is I will start with what the owner wants for the property, if I can get, a, get them to be interested in selling it and uh, see if that's worth it to me. And then we'll go ahead and do some estimates to see if that's actually in line with what it's worth. Uh, I just wanted to show you this because this is the exact same neighborhood where I am looking. And again, this is a property I've had my eye on literally for years. Now I wanted to put some uh, old, old style gas pumps out in front. You know, just for decoration with the glass globes on the top and put some, yep. old, uh, you know, neon uh, mobile with the uh, Pegasus and, you know, clean it up. And there's a vacant lot right next door. I wouldn't even mind doing a, a two-story attachment that looked like a dealer or something like that. And I could do offices on the top floor and do more cars on, on the first floor. Uh, this one for me was, was a, a, a find because I'd been driving past this property for years thinking about how awesome it would be for my hobby. Uh, we're coming up on time for a break, though, so let's go ahead and take a quick break, and I've got some more videos after this. Las Vegas isn't only a great city to visit, it's a great city to invest in. Bill and I both have been investing in the Vegas area for decades, and that's one of the reasons why we have our Real Estate Buyers event in Las Vegas, Nevada. Check out the same strategies, the same types of properties, the resources that we're using here on the ground, the people that we're using here on the ground to get the same types of returns that we're getting here in Las Vegas. The Real Estate Buyers Event, that's realestatebuyersevent.com. Read more about this event, find out where we're going to be, including where we're going to be in Vegas next, and register. We'll see you soon. Hi, my name is Kevin Mills. I have a real estate training program that is so powerful, I will back it up with a double your money back guarantee that it will make you a millionaire. That's right, double your money back guarantee that you will be a millionaire if you use what you learn in the Millionaire Blueprint. I call it the Guaranteed Millionaire Blueprint. And you can read more about it and watch more videos at guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. That's guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. Check it out, all the information is there. Podcast. Hey, All right. now we're back. And, and uh, now we're back. Welcome back, back. Mr. Guys Podcast. Welcome back. And hey, great service station. I can see how that would uh, work out terrifically. That would be um, fun. So when you move, when you move to Florida, and we get you back into your car mode, you can hang out there with me, and we'll get a whole bunch of gearhead friends, and we'll get matching leather jackets to wear because it'll be <laughs> too hot in Florida. Um, I have but, just about. Uh, I, I'm to the point that almost 95% of uh, any television, uh, Netflix, any of that stuff that I consume, it's real estate and cars. And that, that's it. We're on the same page. And I just found out today that you're left-handed like I am. Yep. Brothers from a different mother, I think. That's it. That's it, man. That's it. All right, so let me move on to the next one. This is a, a great old house, and it was actually easy to find um, because it had a for sale sign on it. It had a little small for sale sign. I don't know if you can see that there, right there in the front. Really, really small. Um, it is actually a realtor's sign, even though it doesn't look like a realtor's sign from the street. This is another example of what I'm talking about. This property, not only is it empty, clearly, it has a sign on it that says it is for sale or rent, uh, and it has a phone number. That's easy. I will go ahead and grab that number right now, make that phone call. Same exact neighborhood. Beautiful, big, old Spanish home built in the early 1900s. All right, I took a quick break, and sorry about that. I took a quick break, and I made a phone call. And got information on this property. That's how quick and easy it is, literally, while I'm sitting here. Uh, spoke with the agent who is listening. It doesn't look like a real estate sign, but it does say Florida's best realty. Uh, spoke with the agent at the office, actually wasn't listening to 
who said they had an offer on it that it didn't develop. So got the information on it. They are sending me a packet and I will meet with an agent later on this week to walk this property and decide whether or not I'm going to make an offer on it. Uh, from what I can see, I would say I probably am. Uh, we're going to have to adjust the price a little bit because I think it's a little more than what it's worth based upon the condition that it looks like from what I can see. I can see through the windows and I can see that the plaster is off the walls. I don't think you can see that in the video. Uh, but again, literally that easy, that simple. Now, some of you may have noticed uh, my dog here. All right, we'll go ahead and, uh, as I said, this is for a different show. Now, when I looked at that property with the agent, most of the plaster had fallen off the walls. And this was an early 1900s home. For those of you who live in newer areas and are familiar with these old homes, they're lathen plaster. So behind the, the thick plaster that's put on by hand, there's wooden strips. Most of the house was those wooden strips. The plaster had fallen off long enough ago that somebody's already scooped it all up and cleaned it up. Um, so the reason I'm buying these particular houses, now I wanna, I wanna preface this exactly like I did on the show do not go into these types of neighborhoods. These, these are high-end neighborhoods, okay? Um, Bill and I have been doing this for a lot longer. We have a better feel for it. We also have a little better uh, financial and monetary system. These are houses that I'm buying because I like old houses. I will keep these houses because they rent for crazy expensive in Palm Beach and the Palm Beach area. They will become income properties. These are not good starter properties for you, but what I am doing in farming this, this neighborhood is the exact same thing you can do in farming any other neighborhood. So I will go in and, and we will actually rebuild these houses, restore these houses the exact way that they were done originally. I will put the plaster, the laughing plaster, right back onto the walls. Um, this was a house that I got an accepted offer on and it was for a lower price than what they were asking for that particular property. Uh, let's see here. A, a couple of things before we move off, uh, off of that property there. So I've had people ask me uh, many, many times, hey, when I'm getting started, how do I figure out what's the price range I want to play in? And so when I look at that, one of the things that you can do is you can go to uh, realtor.org, RG, which is the kind of the agent side of the National Realtor Association site, realtor.com. So you can go to realtor.org. There's a research tab on there. You can find what the median price is for your market. And then when I'm getting people started investing, I like for them to, to play in about 10% either side and median because that gives them the greatest number of people having the ability to buy that property. So that that's uh, one thing. And then one of the things that Kevin mentioned there, which is vitally important when you're building your business and, and 90 plus percent of investors miss this, even when they're seasoned. And that is, there was a contract on the property and went ahead and talked to the agent anyway. If you like the property, always remember about 20% of all contracts fall out and they fall out for financing. So if a deal is working, and the numbers work for me and I see the property, but somebody's already beat me to it and they've gotten it under contract. One of the things that I like to do is reach out to the agent and let them know, Hey, I could either put in a backup offer uh, or Hey, I, I can just keep a check on it. It's in a pending status. Now what day? And, and sometimes they're, they're comfortable saying this. Sometimes they're not. It's okay. Either way, you know, what's the expected close date on it. And so then I just keep tabs on that property so that knowing that many times something's going to fall out and when it does, I want to be right there. And what you'll see is just what Kevin did on that property is that it, we're, we're literally in the middle of this on a, a property right now. A property is listed at 490 uh, that we got beat to the punch on it. And the offer that was accepted was 412. And so I let the agent know, Hey, uh, understand if anything happens, reach out to us this morning, got an email from the agent, everything fell through. Uh, and so we're putting the, the uh, bid together with one of my agents right now. Uh, and look, we're not coming in at 412. We already know they would go to 412. So we're going to come back at about 390 and, and uh, see how they play. We're up on a break time here. 
Uh, we're going to hear more from Kevin about how to farm these neighborhoods. So hang around for more real estate now. The Investor Guys podcast. We'll be right See back. You in a minute. A lot of real estate training programs claim that they will make you a millionaire, but how many of them will guarantee it? The millionaire Blueprint comes with a millionaire guarantee. I guarantee that if you use the strategies and you use the formulas that you will learn in the Millionaire Blueprint, you will be a millionaire. I guarantee that with a double your money back guarantee. Whether you have hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest or absolutely nothing, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to start investing and be a millionaire guaranteed. Now, I can't tell you all about it in this short amount of time, so go to the guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. That's the guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com. Watch the videos there. Read about the guarantee. Read more about what we offer with the millionaire blueprint. Get signed up. I'll see you in Palm Beach. Eleven months out of the year, Bill Barnett and myself do real estate buyers events in great cities like Orlando, Florida. We bring a group of investors to the cities where we have personal experience. We show them what we're buying, what not to buy, the strategies that we're using to get great returns on our real estate investment portfolios in these specific markets. These events are designed to put properties into your portfolio while you are here. To read more about the Real Estate Buyers Events, go to realestatebuyersevent.com. That's realestatebuyersevent.com. Our schedule is there. You're going to read more about the event, and you can even register. We'll see you at our next event. And we are back from our break. And as Bill was saying, I will put in backup offers all the time, too. And it does not have to be for more than the previous offer. You already know what they accepted for the offer. Uh, it can be the same. It can be less. It can sometimes be more if you feel like it's going to be more. If you, if I like it less. What's that? Less is always better. But what I'm saying is. I like is, less because here's the thing. We know where they are now. Here's what I want to tell you, uh, listeners out there. Put yourself in the position of the seller. They had this property under contract, in their mind, this property is sold, done, gone. They have spent this money about 15 different times. Now suddenly, all that's fallen through. They're crestfallen, and if it's an institution, they're annoyed. And so here you are, stepping in, being the hero, but there's always a little price to that in my book. So I like to- There's always the possibility that they're going to contact somebody who made the offer before at a higher price. So I always give my best offer to them. And if that's what works, that's what works. A lot of times when something falls out, if they don't have a backup offer, like, like what Bill and I are talking about, or even if they do have a backup offer, the agent will call and reach out to other people that were interested in the property, other agents that had clients who were interested in the property and see if they still want to make an offer on the property. So I give yeah. my best offer so that they have it, it's ready to go. I'll submit backup offers. I won't even say, hey, what's going on with the property? If it's a property I'm interested in, I'll just submit the backup offer so that they have it. I'll submit it to their broker so their broker has it because a lot of agents don't want to take backup offers. So I will actually submit it directly to their broker so the broker has it. Then if it falls out for any reason, falls through, then they already have that backup offer. Usually the broker pushes more to go with the backup offer than to get on the phone and start calling because that's a waste of time as far as they're concerned when they have a burden in hand. Um, so I'll just submit the backup offer and I, myself, less is, is better, but I will submit it for my best price. And sometimes it's less than what, what the other offer is. But um, getting back to farming though, get familiar with the area that you want to farm. And don't make it too big. Make, you, can get, you can choose a big neighborhood if you want, but don't, don't plan to choose the whole south side of Los Angeles, for example, as your farm, okay? Um, choose one, two, three different neighborhoods. Now, as I was going through this neighborhood and speaking to other people, I found that there is another neighborhood in the community immediately south in Lake Worth that has similar properties that is right now at the beginning stages of gentrification. So I can find these same types of properties 
and they're going to be going up even more in value. So not only will I have the rents when the gentrification occurs, but I will have that equity spread when the gentrification kicks in, in the next few years. So be familiar with the neighborhood. And I think in the next video, I actually mentioned, get familiar with the people who are in the neighborhood. Talk to people. Um, let me go ahead and uh, get this last video. This is our last video for uh, this particular set. So, All right. As a real estate investor, I have lots of different strategies. And this is vacant land in that same neighborhood. I, around. I keep an eye on vacant properties just like this. This is a very large, uh, I'm going to say corner lot, but it's actually a pie shaped lot. And excellent size, big enough for a large house and lots of yard. Me personally, I have a background actually that my construction. And as you can see, the houses in this neighborhood are very large. Yeah. Permitted for a house and build a home on it. Uh, probably sell it. Uh, as a beginning investor, you find properties like this, find developers find builders, even find contractors, just contractors that would be interested in building on this property and uh, possibly sharing the property profits with you, but at the very least, uh, get the option on the property and then sell it to the contractor or the developer and make your profit there. Now, while you're driving around, you can see lots of different things with vacant property also. This is actually uh, facing the river between us and Palm Beach. When I say us, I'm in West Palm Beach right now. This is literally almost a half, actually a little more than half acre. And this is what they can build the house. This would be their view. That's Palm Beach that they're looking at. That has a boat dock that comes with it as well. Now, in this particular case, there is a for sale sign. So I can call, call, find out what the asking price is on this property. You never know. Just because it's being represented by an agent does not mean that it's going to cost a fortune, does not mean that it's not a good deal does not mean that you can't buy it at asking price or even market price and put a strategy in place that is going to put big profits in your pocket. Just about anything you build here, and honestly, I would build a single family, large, high end residential property, single family, uh, you're going to be able to easily sell it and get a price for it. Here we have another vacant property, and I've already done a little bit of diligence on this particular property. This property has already been subdivided into four different lots. So I can take this property, build a really high end home on this, or I could build four high end homes. I would have to figure out what's going to be my highest and best use. And again, this is on the river. This is the view of those homes would have on the other side of the street. Now, as I said, I've done the due diligence on this property already. It has been vacant and empty like this for a long time. The sellers are motivated. Uh, this is one I am already working on. Again, in the same neighborhood that I have been farming uh, for the last uh, week or so and that we can drive them around for today. And this is the last vacant property I'm going to show you. There are actually others. Um, I just don't want to get you guys bored with uh, staring with at the grass. The vacant property and the project I built. This also, right across the river, from all the best properties right there. It's a crane. on a new dock project for more docking for boats uh, for 
which is going to add more value to the area as well. These properties here have, as you can see, docks across the street from them. So this one could easily get a permit for a dock on the river, and you have extra value for this particular property. The property next door house has a dock across the street. Now, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, and we're going to go back to the studio. But in closing, I want to remind you that if you have a area that you're familiar with or an area that you want to get to know, make sure you go up and down every street, even the dead end. So you'd be surprised where he's sitting at the end of the dead end street that nobody sees. So up and down every single street, get to know that neighborhood intimately. Uh, in the past, one of the things I have done, I have seen houses that to me looked like they were vacant. The yards were overgrown, uh, no cars in the driveway, mail was piled up. I got a hold of the owner and different situations. Sometimes the owner was in the hospital. Uh, I, I would go and visit them, not to try to talk them into selling the house, but just to get to know them. Again, somebody who's in the neighborhood is going to go out. Uh, a lot of times it's an elderly person or a shut-in person. Uh, I will offer to bring a crew over to mow their lawn to make the house look a little bit nicer. That doesn't cost that much money. And I build some goodwill and get to know, again, some people in the neighborhood. And uh, those are really your best resources when you're talking about working in a specific neighborhood that you want to get involved in. Finding people who have been in that neighborhood for a long time, into that neighborhood, they will be able to clue you in on things that you can never find just from the All right, so I'll see you guys back in the studio. And we are back in our own home studios. So those are the steps that I go through when I'm farming a neighborhood. And if you're going to make that neighborhood your own and you are a real estate investor, you don't want to overlook any opportunities because if you think about it, every opportunity that you pass up in that neighborhood is something that somebody else gets, but it's also an opportunity you lost to add more value to the properties you already have in your neighborhood. If you pick up a property and you improve the value of that property, you have improved the value of the other properties that you own in that neighborhood. If you're building high-end homes, even if you sell them to somebody else on those vacant infill lots in that, that in your farm, essentially, you are adding more value to your properties. Now, something else that you need to keep in mind is more than just having real estate in that particular neighborhood, you need to think of it as a resident. If there is a neighborhood association, uh, a neighborhood watch, whatever it is, become involved in it so that you know what's going on. Another great way to meet people, another great way to find out when people are going to sell their properties. Um, if something is happening as far as uh, redevelopment funds or something that are going to happen from the city or from the county, okay, get involved with that so that you know what's going on. Make this your second home. And it really should be. You should be as familiar with this neighborhood or more familiar with this neighborhood than you are with the neighborhood that you live in. And like I said, don't be afraid to go out and knock on doors with a handful of flyers. Introduce yourself. Let them know that you bought a few houses in the neighborhood. You love this neighborhood and you're looking to buy more houses. You may not want to sell your house now, but in the future, if you do, please give me a call first. You know? And just door to door to door to door. And you'd be surprised. The person you handed the flyer to may not be the person who called you. It may be the person across the street that wasn't in when you knocked on the door. Um, work this neighborhood the same as a real estate agent would. And you're going to have more attachment to this neighborhood than a real estate agent because you're going to own properties there. It's going to behoove you to, to put as much effort and as much improvement into this neighborhood as possible because it means money in your pocket. We are way over today oh, okay. uh, and we're going to have, uh, we're going to be doing another show on farming, how to find farm areas so that you can get out there and start buying. Make sure you keep a tab on investorguyspodcast.com and uh, same thing with our website, investorguyspodcast.com. Facebook. Follow us sure and like us on Facebook. Yes. 
subscribing, following, liking, all of that good stuff. Thanks for being here today. And we'll see you next time on the Investor Guys podcast, Kev. Have a great rest of the week and happy investing. And I'll see you later. You got it. Thank you.